Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over uh, the different areas where you can use a dent barrel and a dent ball. Before we get to that, we have a little bit of news for you. Uh, we are going to be uh, having a Oh man, I, I almost had it too. Yeah, like, you were, I you was were going like, so well. I was, I was, I was like, oh, we're going to rock and roll. Fingers crossed. He's got it this time. <laughs> uh, I, sorry, I looked down at my notes, which was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, go we, with it. We have some news for you. We uh, we just did our basics for saxophone, basics done right for saxophone course. That's why we're missing the last week or so. You've been busy. Um, Ryan's been very busy. He's had a couple of courses. We have another course coming up. And that's going to be our advanced saxophone repair course coming up on September 19th. And we're doing some dense stuff to kind of get ready for that. Uh, we do have a couple of winners. We had a winner from our Facebook feed. Make sure you take the hashtag. That's Dent Barrel. Put that in the comments below. You'll be entered into the drawing for getting 10% off of our tuition for either the saxophone advanced course in September or our engraving course in October, which is almost full. Which is good. Both of them, yeah. yeah. There, there's like half a spot left. Half a spot. Yeah, Three so you quarters might want to sign spot. up. Even if you're just thinking about it, go ahead and sign up. So the winner for this week for tuition, a 10% off discount tuition, is Sil Poe. Sil Poe, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and uh, we will get you your tuition. We also have somebody coming all the way from Columbia. South America. So, yeah. Columbia, that's right. Yeah, not yeah. South not Carolina. South Carolina. Uh, coming from Columbia, South. What, South what is, America. is it South America? It is, yeah. Columbia, yeah. South America. Yeah. Where is Columbia? North of Brazil. Right at the, yeah, yeah, right at the top of South America. Oh, right below good. Central. So <laughs> Central, South. Who knows? They, they would get a geography lesson. Yes. Some two I, guys who are unsure about certainly it. Certainly, I so. need one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so sorry about that. Witty banter. Uh, we have our advanced <laughs> sax course coming up, Brian. We're going to be doing some dent work today yes let's talk about uh which which and where to use a dent barrel what do you want to start with barrels or balls uh let's go barrels okay. barrels absolutely since it's in the hashtag like share and subscribe yes like the bell. thank put you put that in the comments put it in both remember not just the live stream but the other one as well that's right put it in the comments so. below the video and you can put it in sure. the live comments too in fact just get on the phone right now tell your friends yes you guys gotta you guys have to see this <laughs> I'm watching this video on the internet. You guys have to see this. So let's go over some barrels first. Yes, I'll show you a couple different types of barrels. I'll go over their different uses. You can see a barrel here. Uh, it's, it's aptly named a barrel because it looks kind of like a barrel. Like a barrel. Yes. You can imagine what a, a dent ball would look like. Uh, but these are dent barrels. Uh, this is one that is we call the 7-inch. There it is engraved on the front there. 7-inch dent barrel. And, and no, it's not that this is 7 inches big. Uh, if it is, I have gigantic, huge hands. But no, it's, this curvature is based off of a circle with a seven inch diameter. Okay, so if you draw on a piece of paper a circle with seven inch diameter, this is the curve you're going to get. Um, and that is why it's aptly named the seven inch dent barrel. Okay. Uh, then we also have these. They are named slotted dent barrels. We have one for alto and then, then there's one for tenor. Uh, and you can see why they are aptly named the slotted dent barrel because of that slot. And I'll show you here uh, in a second, what this slot is used for, um, but obviously yes. the dent barrels uh, is what we're going to be using to remove some dents. And what I would do is I would use dent barrels on straighter sections. So the body tube section is one that I would use a dent barrel. Um, we'll talk about what when I would use a dent ball, but that's essentially. Now there's what a trick do. though too when you're putting yes. that on the mandrel. There is. Yes, you see the slot right here needs to be at the, if you're going from, from a clock, at the six o'clock position. So it needs to be on the bottom. Uh, and the reason why we have that slot is so it can get past the pip. And you can see that little guy sticking out right there at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, and that is our body octave pip right there. Okay. Uh, so what I do is when I put this on, I have to make sure that that pip is lined up with the slot and then I'm able to insert this on. And this, these are great for if you don't have the instrument disassembled and you need to do some dent work down in this section or even up in here. Okay, It's great for dent work all across the body tube uh, because you don't have to disassemble it. You can go right through the receiver. Uh, you know, you can get your dent work done, especially down in here. You can see dent barrel. So Ryan, you're using the slotted dent barrel not only in the say the upper or left hand section mm -hmm. of the body tube but you can also use it down below absolutely. the right hand area yep yep absolutely 
Um, obviously, the Alto is a little bit smaller for fitting into Alto uh, body tubes. We also have the Tenor one as well, and you can see that slot used to get past the can body. Can you fit. use the Tenor one in the lower section of the Alto body? I mean, you can't go through the. You the can't tenon. really. Yeah, it's it's sometimes it's it's too big to actually go through the the receiver here. Um, but if I have this apart, yeah, absolutely, I could thread this guy on and use this to get dense. You know, if, if I have it disassembled. Would that also work on baritone bodies if you have the baritone? Yeah, yeah, you could use this on baritone bodies. Baritone bodies are a little bit tricky because you do a lot of times have to disassemble mm. the entire thing, uh, not just the bow, but that top crook as well in order to get any kind of dent removal done in a berry body. So, Ryan, let's talk, those are the alto and tenor mandrels. Let's also talk about the, the areas where you could use the 7-inch dent ball, the larger nice, of yes. the barrels. Sorry, um, not ball, barrel. The barrel, yes, dent yes. barrel. That's okay. Dent barrel, there it is. Hashtag dent barrel. Like, share, subscribe, click the bell, send us money. So, um, my rule of thumb, again, is on straighter sections of a saxophone, let's say this bell section right in here, I would use a barrel. Okay, I want the most amount of surface area to press up against the dent. On areas that have a little bit more curvature to them, like this bow section or maybe a sax neck in this section here, mm -hmm. I would most likely use a ball. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but let's say I'm, I'm removing dents, I'm gonna use my large seven inch dent barrel. My working surface is really not quite this hump, although I, I do use it occasionally. Um, it's right in here or right in here. I want the most amount of surface area, which is why I switch. If I'm going to do dent work in this, you know, bow or sorry, this bell section, I use the large seven inch dent barrel. I don't really want to use this because I want the most amount of surface area to press against the dent. That is going to give you the smoothest amount of, of dent removal. Uh, although we'll talk later, I think, about how you really smooth out that dent stuff. Can you also show us your technique for using this barrel? Uh, which section of the barrel do you use when yep. you're? Yep, right in there. Okay, so you're not you, you're never going to use the edge. No, no, not so much. I mean, maybe if you're raising sharp dents, you might use the edge. But the the way I actually use this is I use it in kind of this back and forth. I don't necessarily use it in a raking motion. A lot of times, if you use, um, you know, do it in a raking motion, especially if you're on an edge or on that hump, you'll actually start to see ridges start to form, um, and it's real tough to remove those. So you're actually pressing the you know, the dent out, out, out actually further than what it needs to be. So if I'm working on, let's say uh, I got some dents in here, this straighter section, again, you can see the dent barrel I'm going to be using right in here. And I'm going to be doing it in kind of that rocking motion. If I have a dent that's right here, I start from the edge and work in, and then I'll go to the other side and work in towards the center. I don't just press that dent ball or barrel directly under that lowest point of the dent and try to push it up. Uh, that's when you get a lot of waviness and unevenness. So I work from one side of the dent, and then I'll go to the other side, working towards the center. And like I said, most of the time, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm doing this motion. Every once in a while, I'll do this, but it's that 0.5%. If you're doing this, most likely you're going to be putting big rake marks in. Okay. So. So that's our seven inch barrel. Now let's that's switch to the dent balls. Where do you use a dent ball uh, as opposed to a, a, a cylindrical barrel? Sure, as you can see, we have a couple different styles. So this is an early prototype. This is our teardrop uh, dent ball. I think we're calling it a dent ball. Sure. Um, but it's really all this amount of curvature that I'm, that I'm going to be using. Um, you can see the straighter sections are great with the, ball, with the barrel more curves you have, like in a bow. You want to show them an actual ball, yeah, too? Do. You can see there's another one that is just a straight-up ball with the threaded hole, and you would put that on to the end of your dent rod. Uh, but really, this is my working surface. So if I'm working with this light bulb-shaped dent, bu uh, dent ball, balls and barrels, mm -hmm. balls and barrels with the tongue twister. <laughs> um, again, that is good for rounded sections like this bow okay um, if i try to use something like this in this you can see that edge would possibly you know cause a you know a a hump you know or actually dented out so i don't want to really use anything that has any sharp edges i want to use something that has a lot of curvature to it uh, and i try to use a dent ball 
that is as close to the diameter or the size of the tubing that I'm working in. Um, so I really probably wouldn't use something this small in this big, large area. I'd save this for maybe a, a you know, curved soprano bow or, mm. you know, an alto bow. Uh, for tenor bows, I'd use probably the larger one. Uh, but they come in a variety of dis different sizes. Um, but you can see with all that, those curvature, I can really get in here, especially in this section where it tends to take quite a bit of damage. Um, and for this, I'm going multiple directions. I am going this way, and I do tend to go this way to try to remove all those dents. Now, are you using the same size dent rod for all of this? I try to. I try to, if I can, use okay. the largest size dent rod, largest diameter okay. uh, of, of the shaft, because it just gives you a little bit more stability. So that's a four-foot rod, three-quarters inch diameter. Yep. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, I believe you. I believe you. I totally believe you. Half 13 threads. Yep. There you go. Yep. Yep. So there you are. Okay, so that's your teardrop dent balls. Now, uh, Ryan, what about smoothing out a dent? So say you, you'd mentioned that there was some places where you might cause some ridges or there's some previous work. Say you have previous work done poorly by a, a, a different tech or whatever, yep. and you need to smooth them, things out. For that, I like to use these body section mandrels, and these are my favorite. This, in conjunction with some kind of rolling burnisher, um, is great for removing dents, especially in, you know, areas that see a lot of dents, you know, the bottom hand, right hand of, a, of an alto body. You can put that on. Um, once you've done, you've done you, most of your dent work with, you know, whatever barrel you're going to be using in that section, I like to finish it off by rolling any of that lumpiness out. Uh, and this is great. This is our, our slide lock roller tool. Uh, and this is a rolling burnisher this whole tip part this um i guess it's steel stainless steel stainless steel stainless steel tip is uh it, you can see is on a bearing and it rolls and what i'm doing is just kind of smoothing out the brass between this steel um body section mandrel and the steel tip and i'm just going to be going back and forth uh, and it's important when you're doing with this you're not going to use a lot of pressure okay so i don't really need to push too much in it's more about kind of forming that that brass back to that shape uh, keep in mind this is steel the body section mandrel is steel, but this brass is much, much softer. Uh, so if I really get too much force, I can actually flatten out that brass and you can see streaks. So you mm -hmm. want to be very careful. It's more about how long or how many times you go back and forth smoothing out the dents than it is how hard you're doing it. Okay? Sometimes I might even go with just, just the handle itself. So I'm really not putting too much pressure. Now, is it just a light pressure, but you're using, say, a lot of strokes? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yep, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, I've definitely seen you guys that exact technique exactly. many a time. Yep. Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't like to muscle it here because, well, mainly I don't have a lot of it. So i got to use my brain. The brain's a big muscle, work, right? work, work smarter, harder, wh yeah. however that goes. Yeah, either yeah. work smarter, don't work at all. That's my <laughs> motto. What about the, and I don't want to backtrack, but what about, uh, I had, we had a question on the last feed about uh, taking dents out of a neck. Is yes. that a, you're going to be using neck a, dents. a mandrel, you're going to be using a ball. So you can see here the, the neck. I, I treat this again, any straighter sections, I might use barrels. I might try to get in from, from the neck side and try to remove it with a, maybe a very small dent rod. But when you get into this section, this curved section, you have to go to using a ball. And you, rather than using a ball like this, which is definitely definitely not going to fit in. <laughs> definitely not going to fit in, <laughs> in case you guys need a proof that it's not going to fit in. Uh, you would use a, a much smaller. Um, Here, I can change that. There we go. Yep. We can use a much smaller A curved dent rod like so where you can screw in the smaller balls. And that way I can actually get up in there. Oh, there we are. And you can see, depending on the curvature or the location of the dent, I could either use this section or I could switch to this section. And you can see how that would line up and I could do a lot of my dent work in this area. Um, works the same with tenor necks. You just may have to change the, whatever side of the dent rod you're using. Uh, and also you may have to change the diameter of the ball. Okay. What about, uh, this will be one of my last questions, what about uh, removing a post mm -hmm. or pulling up a post? Uh, say you have a post, uh, say the low E-flat area where mm -hmm. they often get dented in. Um, do, you, do you remove the post? Do you pull the post? What's your preferred uh, you know, method 
over um, the years. Uh, my preferred method is assuming it's not on a rib like this. You can see all these posts are soldered on to another piece of brass that is then soldered onto the body. If it's individual posts, it's much easier to deal with those. So if you're working on old cons or kings or bushers, um, it's much easier to remove the post, do your dent work, and then solder that post back on. Sometimes I will try to remove the, the, the dent underneath the post while keeping the post there. But the surefire way to make sure that not only you've done proper dent work, uh, but that you can make sure that things are realigned is to unsolder the post, do your dent work, smooth everything out, reassemble everything, and then solder your post back into position. Um, that I find is probably the best way to do it. It is a little bit more time consuming, uh, but it, I've, it's tough enough to go through one layer of brass, uh, and it's even tougher to go through two. Uh, another area would be on the bow section. Mm. Okay, so a lot of times removing these bow guards. Here, I'll, let me change that. There you go. Sorry. So removing these bow guards, a lot of times you'll get dents here, uh, and it's very tough to get those out while keeping that in place. So a lot of times you'll remove this, you'll do your dent work. A lot of times you'll have to remove the dent on the actual bow guard itself. You'll join them back together and solder them back on. Holy cow. So yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of work, which is, yeah, why we don't really like seeing dents in the bow. Mm. Well, Ryan, thank you for that demonstration. Uh, I know that next week you're going to be in our immersion course where you have a single person coming for the entire week, and it's one-on-one -on -one yeah. Custom tailored to kind of what they want to learn and what they want to know. It's a little bit of maybe the basic stuff, maybe a little bit of some key fitting stuff, some advanced stuff. So, yeah, it'll be a, be a good time. Dent Barrel. Make sure, you, make sure you take Dent Barrel. Put it in the comments below. You can be entered in to get 10% uh, off any of the courses that we have coming up for this year. Uh, Silpo, make sure you send me an email to rich at musicmedic.com. And we will be here next week with Leroy because Ryan's going to be in the immersion course. Uh, you can check musicmedic.com in the education section to see what that course is all about. And Leroy will be back next week with us doing uh, clarinet uh, throat tone setup. So that's a very common repair and there's some tips and tricks that are going to be really helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and until next time, happy repairing.